Welcome to the Lord's house as we gather, and uh, God's peace be with you as we gather together here in his house. Uh, just a couple of announcements tonight. First of all, uh, this is our stewardship emphasis, and we are uh, using that theme, Stewards of the Gifts. Uh, this is our last weekend as we uh, g- recognize that here in worship, and it'll be part of our sermon tonight as we follow the parable of the talents. But we're also asking that every family group would please uh, take a card off the table when you leave uh, the, this evening, and uh, those cards are there uh, for you to consider your commitment for 2021. And, uh, and so it's pretty straightforward, the card, uh, but we would ask that you'd give some time and thought, prayer, uh, to your uh, intentions for 2021, uh, seeking God's leading in that, and then and then to keep one copy of the card for yourself as a reminder, but then also to put the other card in the envelope, seal it. Those are not opened. Uh, They are uh, gathered, and we will present those on the altar uh, on November, the weekend of November 29th, uh, to be consecrated to the Lord. And so please, uh, if you would, uh, follow that. And again, it's between you and God, and we invite you to please fill one out. Again, one copy stays home with you, and one copy comes back to church, and you can bring those anytime uh, in the next couple of weeks. So please grab a card as you leave uh, this evening. We also want you to be very much aware of all the different opportunities to be involved in Bible study here at St. Paul. Uh, virtually, um, as we have many opportunities, please check out our website. Uh, lots of opportunities there to, to get into God's Word, so please Uh, Check that out. Also, we want to make you aware of our Thanksgiving worship services. Uh, That's in two weeks from today. Uh, We will have our regular Wednesday evening service. It will be a Thanksgiving service at 5.30 on Wednesday, uh, the 25th of November. And then on the 26th, Thursday morning, we will have worship at 10 o'clock in the morning on Thanksgiving Day. So just uh, to call your attention to that, uh, be aware of those special worship times uh, coming up in a couple of weeks. Those are our announcements this evening. Again, welcome to the Lord's house. Our bell will call us to worship, and we will begin with our invocation.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are our good and faithful master. Thank you for the abundance of blessings you have poured into our lives. Strengthen us by your mighty power that we might serve you well and faithfully. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament lesson for this evening is from Zephaniah chapter 1. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guest. And on the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons and all who array themselves in foreign attire. On that day, I will punish everyone who leaps over the threshold and those who fill their master's house with violence and fraud. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will be heard from the fish gate, a wail from the second quarter, and a large crash from the hills. Wail, O inhabitants of, of mortar, for all traitors are no more. All those who weigh out silver are cut off. And at that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are complacent, who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do ill. Their goods shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they build plant vineyards, they should not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. 
But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for, for you are all children of light, children of the day. You are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober, and let those who sleep sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Let us rise for our Alleluia in verse. Alleluia. For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter where you scattered no seed so i was afraid and i went and hid your talent in the ground here you have what is yours but his master answered him you wicked and slothful servant you knew that i reap where i have not sown and gather where i have scattered no seed then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming, I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place... There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join together in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, 
and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we join in singing our sermon hymn. Dear dear friends in Christ, it is good to be here in our Lord's house this evening as we gather for worship. Our text today is Matthew chapter 25, selected verses. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you have entrusted to me five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come, share in your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have scattered no seed. I was afraid, and I went went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. This is our text. I have before me a set of instructions. For all you pet lovers out there, these instructions are how to give a dog a pill. Number one, wrap the pill in bacon. That is all. (laughs) How to give a cat a pill. Number one, pick up cat, cradle it under your left arm as holding a baby. Position your right forefinger and thumb in either side of the cat's mouth. Gently apply pressure to the cheeks while holding pill in right hand. As cat opens mouth, pop pill into mouth. Allow cat to close mouth and swallow. Number two, retrieve pill from floor and cat from behind sofa. 
Cradle cat in left arm and repeat process. Retrieve cat from bedroom, throw a soggy pill away. Number four, take new pill from foil wrap. Cradle cat in left arm holding rear paws tightly with left hand. Force jaws open and push pill to back of mouth with right forefinger. Hold mouth shut for a count of 10. Retrieve pill from goldfish bowl and cat from top of wardrobe. Call spouse from garden. Number six, kneel on floor with cat wedged firmly between knees. Hold front and rear paws. Ignore low growls emitted from cat. Get spouse to hold cat's head firmly with one hand while forcing wooden ruler into mouth. Drop pill down ruler and rub cat's throat vigorously. Retrieve cat from curtain rail. Get another pill from foil wrap. Make note to buy new ruler and repair curtains. Carefully sweep shattered figurines from hearth and set to side while gluing later. Number eight, wrap cat in large towel. Get spouse to lie on cat with head just visible from below armpit. Put pill and end of drinking straw. Force mouth open with pencil and blow down drinking straw. Check label to make sure pills are not harmful to humans. Drink glass of water to take taste away. Apply Band-Aid to the spouse's forearm and remove blood from carpet with cold water and soap. Number 10, remove cat from the neighbor's shed. Forgo any notion of successfully getting cat to take medicine. Number 11, ring local pet shop and see if they have any hamsters available. <laughs> Gracious receivers, our stewardship emphasis is on stewards of the gifts. Yet, for some, stewardship is a tremendous joy and blessing, and yet, for others, stewardship is a tough pill to swallow. We see that in our text today from Matthew 25. There were indeed three individuals who received the opportunity to be faithful caretakers and stewards of their master's gifts. You see them in your minds as either excitedly and wonderfully waiting for their master's return or biting their nails and anxiously awaiting to see what their master's response will be. Three different individuals with three different amounts entrusted to them, but only two kinds of responses. We hear in the reading there is a distinction between the two camps. The servants were either faithful or unfaithful, grateful or ungrateful, joyful or begrudging, diligent or slothful, dog or cat. Make no mistake, it's not easy for us as God's stewards to faithfully and fully use all of the gifts he has entrusted to us. And yet we know that these incredible gifts and resources are not meant to be buried in the ground, tucked away for that other day around the corner. They're not meant to be used solely and selfishly on ourselves, but the generous master calls us to put to work all of the resources God has entrusted to us, to use them for the sake of the kingdom, the work of Christ to seek and save lost sinners. So tonight we ask, which of our master's gifts have we buried away in the ground? Which of the master's gifts have we set aside for another day, relegated to the task of having someone else do the work because they're more qualified? Maybe it's gifts of exhortation and encouragement. Maybe it's gifts of administration, musical gifts, vocal gifts, gifts of teaching and, and talking, maybe storytelling, you see, the gift of being a steward. We have the unfaithful steward. He could not graciously receive the gift the master put to you, have him put to use. Because in reality, this unfaithful steward, he never really knew the master. He did not know the master and who the master really was. For he claimed the master was a hard man, reaping where he did not sow scattering where he did not um, put seed. That wicked servant lived with an image of the master in his mind that he had made up. He, this master was not as the servant had described. For Jesus reveals the opposite. Jesus reveals to us a generous master, 
one who gives all that he has into the hands of his servants. Jesus reveals to us a God not of our own imagination, but a God who is incredibly generous. And to those who contrive a God that is not true, it will be for them as they imagine. It will be a hard master, not a generous one. For God is indeed generous. The master gave talents. Now, if you were listening in the text, that's plural. To the faithful stewards, a talent is thought to be equivalent to 20 years of daily wages. Now, the master gave talents, equivalent of 20 years of daily wages. If this isn't generous, I don't know what is. Jesus is the one who is faithful with all of God's gifts. God the Father's love is not to be measured for you this day in wealth or the amount of talents, but it's measured for you today in the life, death, and resurrection of his Son. You see, God was generous to you, generous to those who fall asleep in Christ Jesus, generous because he took on the weight of the world. He suffered unto death. He gave us a love that was priceless, a love that did not flinch at the cost of sin, a love that would suffer death and eternal damnation, that we might know the generous love of God for sinners, a generous love for each and every one, each and every day. This generosity of God is truly astounding when you stop to think of it. Last week, as we began our sermon series on stewards of the gifts, Pastor Halke mentioned that talents was not to be thought of as abilities in our text. It's not like they had different abilities, but the master gave varied amounts, units of measurement. We have three servants, three different amounts of talents entrusted, but the key is that each was given to his own ability. This sum, equivalent to 20 years of daily wages, is quite a bit of money. Five, three, one, no matter what it is, this is no little amount entrusted by Jesus who is, in, who is faithful. Jesus teaches us to be faithful in every way. Whether little or much, we are called to be faithful. For Jesus himself was faithful. Jesus himself had joy in being faithful to God. Philippians chapter 2. He considered it joy to endure the cross for us. He considered it joy to win us back to himself. Joy to suffer in our place so that we would not be cast into the utter darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. The situation each one of us deserves and yet not the situation we end up receiving. The master loves us. The master has joy over his own people. Under the cross of Jesus and through the empty tomb of Easter, we have been given a household of grace, an immense storehouse of rich blessings to serve him. God's blessings are ours in Christ Jesus. Dear fellow redeemed in Christ, may this God who owns it all and entrusts it to us, may this loving God bless us in the way of his son, Jesus Christ, the one perfectly faithful in all things. May our hearts never begrudge the master. May they always respond to his gracious offer with thanksgiving. And may our prayer always be, it's all yours, God. It's all yours. What would you have me do? What would you have us do, Lord? Help us to be faithful. As we think about our daily lives and the gratitude we're called to have for all that God has blessed us with, that might be the key, to have gratitude, to guard against coveting, to guard against comparing ourselves to others. No matter if one has five talents or three talents or one talent, the response from the master to the faithful worker is always the same. Well done, good and faithful servant. The master's delight is in the servant's use of the gifts. The master doesn't say, give it all back. 
No, we as stewards of the gifts get to receive the joy of managing those gifts. We get to receive the joy of having the experience of building relationships with others. What a tremendous blessing that is, that you, that me, that we as fellow Christians hold on to those relationships. You know, I have relationships from all over the world because of the, the opportunities to serve Christ in his church. Relationships all over the U.S., connections, um, people, places, those memories, those experiences. God doesn't say, give those all back. He allows me to live in the joy of service to him, to know that God blesses that life of service. All we have is the Lord's, and he expects us to live in his joy, the joy of receiving and sharing the gospel work. Now, it goes to say that if you support work outside the church, what a great thing. To support an animal shelter, to help fund a new baseball stadium, through the generosity of cleaning up your local park. These are all wonderful things to do. Things you should do to live and to give generously. But by all means, it is not the same as using our gifts to support mission work to fund universities, to equip people, to teach and preach and to serve our Lord in his church, to reach a world of lost sinners for an eternal joy that is God's and ours in Christ Jesus. Our motivation is gospel-centered, Christ-driven. That's who we are as the people of God at St. Paul. We are centered in the word, pointing people to Jesus. We take joy in that mission of who we are as God's people. Here at St. Paul, daily, children are fed with the good news of Christ's love for them. We have joy in learning what it means to be dedicated followers of Christ our Savior. When we equip couples to be faithful to God and faithful and have fidelity to one another, that brings God joy and that brings us joy. When we come into the Lord's house to proclaim the hope of the resurrection for a loved one who has fallen asleep in Christ, that brings joy to God. That is joy for us. When we proclaim the good news to lost sinners, when we baptize in his name, that brings joy to God and joy to us. A joy shared is double the joy. For you and me as stewards of the gifts, we have double the joy in Christ Jesus. God's work is our work. God's gifts are our gifts. We put them to use for the kingdom. We become gracious receivers and stewards of those gifts entrusted to us. Now, I may have gotten ahead of myself. I may have forgotten to tell you and neglected to say what a steward is. A steward, from the Greek word oikonomia, which is translated administration or management, stewardship, management of that which is assigned. Being a steward means ordering a household. That's what the servants in the text were called to do, order the household. They were called to take charge of the master's possessions. It's not theirs, it's his. They were called to care for those goods, to bring the master joy in their service. And that's our joy as well, to, to order the master's goods, to take joy in our service for him. When our question becomes, Lord, what would you have us do? How would you have us serve you today with the gifts you have entrusted to us? God, align our hearts with your heart, our will with your will. That's the third petition of the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, make my ways your ways. That's our prayer. Your thoughts, my thoughts. That's our hope. Our prayer is that we would acknowledge God as the gracious giver. So last week, Pastor Halke, you, you he gave you a little challenge. First Chronicles 29. Remember, we're all still 29 years old, right? First Chronicles 29. 
And if you've got a chance to read that or have yet to do that, take a look. David's prayer is incredible. He acknowledges God as the one who gives all things. And he realizes it all comes from God. God, give us a King David perspective. David knew that he wasn't going to be the one to build the temple for God, but God was going to appoint his son Solomon to build him a house. And what does David do? David prays that Solomon is faithful in administrating that task, being a steward and carrying out that assignment. What a wonderful prayer that you could pinch yourself today and say, God, You've given me so many blessings. You've given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, all my members, my reason and all my senses. You walk with me through life's joys and struggles. God, you shepherd me daily. You provide me with streams of living water. You've made me a child in baptism, an heir of all of your promises, that I recognize you own it all, God, Make us faithful. So enter into the joy of your master. Enter into the joy of Jesus Christ. Live in your master's joy. How would you do that this week? Each with various gifts and amounts of talents, rejoice in the places God has called you, where he has placed you to serve and to love him. Because God has given his goodness to the world. God's goodness to you and to me, given to us because we are stewards of the gifts given to us in Christ Jesus. May that hope be ours now and always. Amen. And now may that peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts, your minds, and your lives in Christ Jesus. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, you have placed us in various vocations for the sake of your people. Strengthen us when we face challenges and trials. Forgive us when we go astray. Bring back all who have wandered from the faith. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give ear to our pleas for mercy. Lord, raise up good and faithful servants in your church that we work together for the common good and spread the good news of your kingdom to all nations. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give ear to our pleas for mercy. Lord, the day of Jesus' return is drawing near. Give us patience and faith as we await his return. Embolden us to serve our neighbors and never grow weary of doing good. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give ear to our pleas for mercy. Lord, disease and devastation have infected so much of your creation but we know your healing is always close at hand. Be with all those who suffer now through abuse, illness, and injustice. Heal them according to your will and send justice for the oppressed. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give ear to our pleas for mercy. Lord, by the resurrection of your Son, death has been destroyed, yet each human being still faces earthly death. We bring before you all those who are mourning the death of loved ones. Comfort them with the hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give ear to our pleas for mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We join in praying together the prayer our Lord has taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.